<laughs> Look at Pedro. <laughs> Solid. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we <laughs> sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just talk about some of the things we found interesting going on in the world of open source. I am Vin. That's Joe. <laughs> and that's Pedro. Also, that's Jill Shirt. She's going to tell you about it in a minute. Um, <laughs> all of you lovely, lovely people showing up, joining us live. It's kind of fun. Um, something to do in the middle of the week, you know, just kind of like, hey, we find anything cool. And we did. We did this mm -hmm. week. Um, Pedro, what's mm -hmm. going on with you, buddy? Aww. Well, over <laughs> here, I uh, I got an already new phone. It's a OnePlus uh, 3. Uh, basically, Nathan got uh got himself a new phone. It's like, uh, so do you want to buy this? Like, yeah, I'll buy it. And then Nori's like, ah, freaking hate my phone. It's slow. It's like, okay, you have it. <laughs> so yeah, Nori's got a really nice new phone, and she was about to like put her sim on. It. It's like, oh crap, what? My sim. It's a micro sim, and it needs a nano sim. Oh. Uh, yeah, really? It's happened to me, yeah. <laughs> so now we're waiting for Nori Sim to be sent from Portugal to here so she can start using her new phone. Why, why, why didn't you go to the phone shop where they had a Sim cutter and go and put it in? Because uh, her Sim still has the stupidly large metal chip thing in the middle. Uh. Listen, at no point did I qualify that and it would still work. I just said, why didn't you? <laughs> yeah, no, it needs to be replaced. It, it's really old. Uh, so, yeah, uh, she's going to be waiting until middle of next week, most likely that's when it gets here. So, yeah. Right on, right on. What's new mm -hmm. with you, Jelly Bean? Aww! We finally had our summer Linux Gamecast party uh, last Saturday during the show, of course, at Matthew's house. Yay! Of course, during the show. I mean, <laughs> yes, of course. It was an LG <laughs> for a Linux long Gamecast. time. I'm like, why do you do this on Tuesdays? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Uh, Patrick was there, Jelly Bean was there, and uh, Steven, Steve Husband, and Linux Chicks, and we just, we had a really great time, and Alan. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. We, we'd been wanting to do one, and it had been hard to get coordinate, because we're all busy doing with our lives, but it was nice to have another one again. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. I, I know you dug the community aspect of it. Everybody else is like, ah, oh, right. Yes. Let's go drink. And uh, Matthew's like, <laughs> earlier in the day in Discord, he's like, oh, I got a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's going to be uh, people coming over. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been having a fun time over here. Been uh, finishing the migration of our web zone over to more powerful hardware with better storage, which we already had the um, storage thing taken care of. I just, uh, Long story, past three weeks have been interesting. If you want to see the benefits of it, I think maybe like on your end, if you don't notice anything's changed, I've done the work correctly. It's one of those things. Um, do a search in like our legacy forums. See how quick that mm -hmm. comes up now. But some stuff in the future. Then, of course, Cloudflare. Yesterday, when I was finalizing oh. everything, so <laughs> you know what? What? Fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I'm just glad it's over with and everything seems to be syncing up. I'm tracking down. If you notice anything that was broken, new broken, not anything that's like, oh yeah, it's been broken for years. Um, let me know. And if you're listening to me, everything's working because it went over your podcast sketcher and everything is uh nice, happy, and fun. All right. Yes. Nice. That's enough playing mm -hmm. around. Let's get into the bits and bobs. See what I did there? I read the top of the page. <laughs> yes, oh yes the bits you did and the bombs uh <laughs> from uh the gnome blog and this one is uh more targeted at people looking to work uh for canonical or uh to work in the ubuntu distro ecosystem and uh laney uh has uh posted this uh it's a small post uh you if you are interested in maybe working mm -hmm. as a software engineer for canonical you can just click through the link and it'll take you to the job description it's par for the course i guess i would say it's um if uh you know the, if in previous weeks uh if the these previous weeks have been any indication 
they're probably not interested uh, in hiring you if what you want to do is make Ubuntu uh, the best gaming distro out there. They clearly <laughs> don't want that. Uh, and since this comes from the the uh, the GNOME blog, you may also want to consider the uh, desktop environment that you prefer and uh, what exactly it is that you would like to do if you ended up working on GNOME for Ubuntu. Just saying. <laughs> I'm definitely not bad, man. I mean, I was like, oh boy, I just gave Pedro a swipe sandwich. And it's like, he's not going to be able to resist taking a swipe at Canonical. And we're going to throw Gnome on top of it. And he's like, oh. I thought I did pretty good. You did all right. You're getting better. <laughs> You're making progress, yes. man. <laughs> I mean, I could. <laughs> Pedro's just sitting over there like, do you know how much I just left out? I, I, I got I have ammunition. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Well, One of the things that yeah. caught me off guard was, not really off guard. Maybe, I guess that's still a thing, but in like 2019, and it's like, you need to have a degree in a related field. It's like the related related field of uh, Linux desktop engineering. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what is that? Uh, animal husbandry? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be. I mean, they, they do say that you will be working with the community a lot. So, yeah, uh, maybe uh, <laughs> animal handling is a very, very... Uh, <laughs> good skill to have. I mean, it, it looks like it could be a good fit if you're interested in snaps, gnomes, and travel. They make a point of that, and they're like, we're, we're going to ship you around a little bit. And, hey, yeah. I, I dig what Canonical's doing on the desktop. You know, they're doing their own thing, but at mm -hmm. least it's a thing. Yeah. It's yeah, something. Any, yeah, anything to make a gnome's performance better and better. And they're putting a lot of effort into that, of course, as their default window manager. And so that's always a good thing they're giving to the community. Mm -hmm. Right on, right on. Well, the oh, so speaking of the best desktop manager, <laughs> wait, oh, the only de um. uh, desktop manager. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? This is great news, everyone. I hope, honestly, I don't know why I'm surprised, but this is XFCE 414 Pre 2. It's out and it's on time. They even made a point of it. Like, told you we we're going to release yes. it on time. And I was like, well, good on you, lot. Fair enough. Yay. Um, a couple of highlights. Uh, the XFC panel's been updated, fixing some color things. XFWM4, they've uh, added some HDMI theming, and uh, GLX backend's been tweaked a bit. The big one that bought, bought, bugged me was Thunar, because I use Thunar as my ah, FTP yes. client. I'm like, <laughs> da, 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 what? what do you mean? Never thought to initially check that, but it was putting everything in uh, read-only. So immediately, mm -hmm. I'm like, logged into our host checking permissions and like what what happened this was mad hacks on our site and no it was this <laughs> and a couple of other things but i mean if you want to test that you can don't do what i did uh when pre one rolled out a few days later and he's like you know what i need to give that a shot even though this is a production box i need to preach what a practice and um it's like where do i get this is there a copper repo for this what is it what oh i'm already running it okay never mind shut up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fedora. <laughs> That's why those buttons look different. Understood. Yeah. Yeah, well, no. Uh what one of the things uh one of the things you brought up was that the uh they're working on improving the GLX compositor. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Really, really good. I really do hope that uh, that GLX compositor doesn't pull a K win level of bad. I, yeah. I really hope not, because we've all seen how terrible um, some compositors handle GLX contexts. Okay, win. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I really do hope XFC at, at least has that going for them. I I try to love it. I'm wait, waiting for it to get better than Compton. It's got to pass the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Compton is still yes. pretty good. It, it's got to pass <laughs> the terminal draggy test. And open up HTOP on one monitor, open up terminal, and, and you know, spin it right round, baby. And I take a look at, you know, what our CPU versus GPU usage is. Compton still beats it right now. And the only thing I like about Compton is Compton is great until mm -hmm. you have to drag a window or another window. Then... 
Oh, yeah. Or drag mm-hmm. a Chrome tab out of Chrome or back into Chrome. That, like, that, that's just adding hard mode on top of an already yeah. hot mess. <laughs> you have to really play around with the V-Sync and whatnot. <laughs> 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 yeah, they also uh, fixed uh, several bugs in the XFCE4 settings. In the settings manager, the color dialog, and in the display dialog, whose settings were not re- retained across sessions, uh, that was a real annoyance <laughs> for a lot of us. Actually, it was it was so annoying to set up all my displays, and then sometimes it would just you reboot and um, wouldn't keep the settings. Hmm. So that was awesome. <laughs> One thing I'm curious to see if it gets fixed. I know this bugs uh, myself and Jordan. Uh, we got a bunch of monitors, so right. Once you start dealing mm-hmm. with that um, <laughs> UHD lifestyle, you, you can end up with two, then three, and it's going to get nasty. If the power goes out to one monitor, if you cut it off, oh. the <laughs> desktop has a schism. This happens. Yes. <laughs> like normally with our UPS system, like I would have the primary display on that and the rest just now. Uh-uh. All these monitors have to be battery backup because it <laughs> would hose the show. If one of them got cut mm-hmm. off, I hope that gets yeah. fixed. That'd be nice. Also, yeah. they do point out that if this is good enough, it's just going to ship. They might uh, skip pre three. I'm like, yeah, if this is already yep. an RC, uh, it's going to go out, mm. which I think they did an excellent job. I know a lot of people will not agree. I think they did an excellent job because I didn't even notice anything changed. It's like, mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I don't have to learn new things. It's brilliant, but I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the HDMI and the uh, color work so I can set color calibration on individual monitors. That would yes, be fun. Yes, definitely. Because once you get you a real- You can already do that with the NVIDIA drivers. You can. Now, here's the thing, Pedro. You you get two flavors of that. You get the root version, then you get the user version. <laughs> and you, set up, you, you set it up with the root version, and then you set persistence to pick up on that. And you know sometimes <laughs> that works. <laughs> Sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if you have a monitor with a decided red shift, you notice it don't always work. And you're like, what? Because this one has uh, too much red in it. And yeah. this long cat monitor is long is uh, too bright. Even like, and so I, I noticed them like, ah, go away. All right. So mm-hmm. desktops, Waylon, they are determined yes. to make it a thing, you know, 100%. <laughs> Network transparency. This has been a problem in Wayland, and you don't know about that. You couldn't, you know, launch something over, you know, you do uh, X11 forwarding, like what I'm doing right now with auto ardor. I, I gotta learn to say it right. From Jackbox, <laughs> I'm pulling all the GUI and all the front end. This is something X has been able to do since time in memorial. But this mm-hmm. is now being added to Wayland. There's a project, it's called Waypipe. And it's a proxy for Wayland clients. I mean, it does the forwarding, but for whaling and you know mm-hmm. here's what i'm digging about it is it's not going to be someone so pen bandwidth intensive is jill you, you had a mention of uh you know hey yeah. man <laughs> be quiet this isn't cool x can do that it just sucks at it yeah it's yeah very slow it can be very slow and cumbersome even on fast networks and it depends on the application you're trying to use as well <laughs> and as jordan p- points out it's very slow in vms and of course on on uh, wi-fi that but that's a no-brainer <laughs> so you see like a normal person i repurposed enterprise 10 gig mix yeah <laughs> so you're saying you're using like 300 megabytes a second to render a window way more than that sweetheart if you have like a couple of the open like uh the plugins that we use if you go back and watch those videos uh have like open gl visualizers on them you get six or seven of those yeah you're slinging five six hundred megs easy yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah but the having that seamless integration uh if you're like forwarding X through SSH, it's always a bit of a bit of a unicorn to accomplish. You could do it, even in X, you could do it and have it work relatively well if you were on the same network and mm-hmm. if you're running the exact same desktop environment on the local box as you are on the remote <laughs> one, if you're running yeah. the exact same <laughs> compositor, if you're running the exact same theme. 
Uh, basically, you had to have everything closely mirrored as much as possible for it to not look like it came, I don't know, straight out of 1995. Because uh, if you are, say, remoting into a KDE box from a gnome I box, would throw you, you open up a window. window. <laughs> You're opening an application across the world remotely with GUI, and pay- your first thought is, what's not pretty? Out the window you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the thing. If you like this box is running KD, if I try to uh remote with X forwarding onto one of the laptops and that laptop happens to be running something GTK, mm-hmm. the two they don't gel. So when that window shows up on this monitor, it's like okay, that I haven't seen that theme since Windows 98. So okay. <laughs> I just I just needed to launch, man, and using something that's graphically and in- yes. intensive as a door. I, I said it on this show, I was like, okay, that's just going to work. I'm not going to have to do any battles with that. But yeah, uh, in the case of like Ardor and other uh, bits of software that have their own mm-hmm. rendering thing going on and they render their own windows and they don't rely on, GT- on GTK or QT on the system level, those work just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Those work great. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm happy with it. Uh, fair warning, this is a prototype. So I really want to play with Wayland. I really do. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of things <laughs> are holding me back, 100%. We got this. I, I'm getting excited about it because, you know, Jack is getting tied into Pipewire. Um, yes. Red Hat's doing some <laughs> awesome work with that. So all we Yay. need now is Intel discrete GPUs with like proper video encoders on them. And yes. like in 10 <laughs> years, we'll replace X, right? Uh, 10 years, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I'm, op- I'm hoping sooner than that. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, 10 years until we'll say, all right, just 10 more years, we'll have it done. Okay. In okay. 10 years, we'll say, all right, in 10 years, it'll be done. Sure. It's perpetual, yeah. man, like battery technology. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with it. As soon as um, Pipewire is in a workable state, one of these boxes is um, going to lose their 1804 LTS status. And I don't know if I'm going to silver blue it. I don't know how brave I feel like, but. Uh, Rawhide. What's the point? Because the RTC for the <laughs> camera capture, it's it's going to be an experiment. This is after the Pi experiment, though. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, what else do we have coming up next? Aw, well, this is actually really cool. On June 29th, the FreeDOS project turned 25 years old. Yay! And um, this has always been one of my favorite versions of DOS. And I heavily... I used it to render in 3D Studio Release 4 for DOS and Autodesk Animator in the 90s. I used FreeDOS heavily. Um, I liked it a lot better than MS-DOS and Dr. DOS. And, you know, I remember being so impressed with the multitasking features in FreeDOS, like being able to print and format a floppy disk while doing other tasks. That that was uh, moon magic, <laughs> you know, back in the DOS days. And I used to be able to render animation and do those tasks. And what the other cool thing is it was very easy to connect to the internet and had a TCP IP networking stack, unlike DOS, where the networking drivers were hard to install and wouldn't work with every Ethernet card. And I actually remember using Arachne and the Lynx and Lynx, L-Y-N-X and L-I-N-K-S web browsers with FreeDOS which of course are Linux based. And it's really, really, uh, the article, there's a really good article that uh, Jim Hall wrote, uh, the creator of FreeDOS at the Linux Journal about its about FreeDOS's history and its Linux roots and how many apps from Linux have been brought over such as Gawk, Grip, and Man. And uh, those tools were indispensable for those of us running uh, DOS programs. I was really, really happy with that. <laughs> and that's actually one of the things he brings up in uh, the article is uh, they're looking to bring more um, or port more Linux um, command line mm-hmm. tools to FreeDOS. Yeah. And Definitely. that's good. That, that That's very good. Uh, or at least I think it is because my one oh, experience yeah. with FreeDOS <laughs> is uh, with one of those MSI laptops with which came with the mm-hmm. no OS option. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was my experience with FreeDOS because one of my friends bought it. It's like, what the heck is this? That's a pretty oh, good yeah. read going into the, um, 
roots, Linuxy roots with FreeDOS. And yeah. I, I had to think, I was like, have I ever directly, like, I don't think I've ever intentionally installed FreeDOS for anything. I'm not knocking it. I've just never had a use mm -hmm. case for it. But I know mm -hmm. we've used it because it's been bundled with games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I 100% positive. Tools. <laughs> I had a Dell yeah. laptop that I bought. I think the company I was working for at the time bought it. But because mm. I, it was a principal thing to dig around because there was some bizarre configuration option where you could get it with free DOS instead of Windows. It wasn't even about mm -hmm. the money. It was the mm -hmm. principal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and like Mr. Alert says in, in chat, one of my favorite um, web browsers, Dillo, was ported to... Um, uh, DOS and actually uh, free DOS that they did a lot of development on that. That was really, really cool. Mm. And I used to use M player, uh, just so many tools that I loved from Linux I could use in DOS. And I love that. And what's really neat is uh, Jim Hall, you have like the same background I do. You know, I started with Linux back in 93 and I dual booted, you know, DOS and Linux. <laughs> and because um, I was doing um, animation and most of those applications at the time were DOS based and Unix based. So that was just that. That's really cool. <laughs> I was really impressed with the. Does your LS article. work in FreeDOS? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> DIR. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, LS it is... works in CMD nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. You know what? Um. <laughs> I need to. It's been a while She'll since I've ran free on out of date information. Yeah, no, no, no. I haven't ran the new version of it. I so, haven't ran um, the new version ever, and I don't plan to. Yeah, yeah. I only found out that but, uh, LS works in CMD because I work right, with muscle, Windows, muscle unfortunately. Memory, right? You're like, oh, command. And file, yeah, file. it's like okay, I need to figure this out. LS, it's like, oh, wait a second, that worked. <laughs> the only thing I remember from DOS yeah. was D I R P and W for page and wide. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to like mm. scroll like a turtle. Like, what was that one thing I needed? Anyway, yep. Hey, man, flock seagulls, eat it. Mm. We have a flock party so, all our own and they're discounted yeah. flocks, budget flocks. System 76, uh, they're having a bit of a summer sale of their own. And uh, as Ven mentioned, it's the summer flock party. Uh, and you can save. A reasonable amount on uh, some of the laptops that they have on offer, which is very, very nice to see, and some of the desktops as well. Uh, the um, just having Linux <laughs> systems, yeah, no, all right, <laughs> all right, hang on, we gotta play a game higher or lower, laptop backpack 100 bucks. Let's get your bets, mm -hmm. Joe. Uh, uh, higher, higher, <laughs> lower, lower, all right, uh, here we go. Okay. Oh, one, two, three, five. <laughs> okay, so hold on. <laughs> you see, this Dell uh, backpack right here, which is currently holding the uh, precision with the um, the Xeon processor, <laughs> is like 15 pounds. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, that backpack has uh, cut grooves at it that only work with one mother back. That that that's an official Dell backpack. Just saying. Whatever scrub <laughs> system seventy six. <laughs> but yeah, system seventy six. They do have some sales, and you know, stupidly mm -hmm. overpriced backpacks aside, uh, seeing some really nice discounts on Linux hardware is always a good thing. Uh, you know what? Now, I'm to be go fair, ahead and throw this in. To be fair, handmade in San Francisco by a, one one person. Oh, okay. You're paying the SF price. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're actually really beautifully artesian. made. <laughs> yeah. It's a boutique thing. I get it. No. Oh, <laughs> I want one. <laughs> do, would you want one for hundred and twenty-five dollars? Yeah. Well, I, I got to check them out at scale. They're pretty. That's uh, not pretty what I asked. Yeah. Not even remotely. <laughs> What Ven's yes. asking there, Jill, is: Do you want to pay a hundred and twenty-five? Twenty-five sticky caches Probably for a backpack. Not. Okay, Probably just not. in there case anybody was under the illusion that this was a hidden commercial, that shit was crushed. <laughs> no, uh, and to be fair, I actually went to Edgeware's website and Tuxedo's website. It says like, okay, do you guys have anything going on that I can include with this? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we've always said uh, System 76, you 
now, you know, it, it is more boutique. They're able to, you know, they've got their own manufacturing system. And mm -hmm. while I radically disagree with what they did with the Thelio cutting the motherboard things in the back, it's mm -hmm. like, wow, okay, don't <laughs> ever buy that. Um, you get support. And that's, that is yeah. very important to have, especially if you're the type of person that buys pre-built or if you're a company and you need to buy exactly. something and you're not ready, you know, you're buying desktops, like low-end medium workstations. You're not ready to cut the uh, eye-bleeding checks to Dell or somebody to get like full-on Red Hat licensed stuff. System76 yeah. is a good place to get hold to. And they do a lot for the community, especially we saw yep. with, um, you know, Canonical going YOLO, which I was like, do it. Because <laughs> I'm a bit of an anarchist. It's like, but this needs to be done. You know, you're the chosen one. But Pop was like, man, if we got to maintain, you know, multi live ourselves, we'll do it. We got you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. That was really you cool know. for 32 <laughs> bit. So awesome. Keep that in mind. All right. Uh, react. Don't do it. Some 80 song. I don't know the rest of the words to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh it's React OS and they decided well, they they didn't decide anything. Uh one of the current lead developers at Microsoft decided, you know what? Let's rehash that thing I said a few years back and Seven claim uh, yeah, and claim that uh, React OS is very much uh, lifting entire portions of the Windows uh, research kernel wholesale. Uh, and, you know, after reading through the article and him saying, it's like, yeah, they're using the exact same variable names, yeah. they're using the exact same arguments, they're using the exact same structure for a lot the, of the code. The, the, the kind of sold me, it's like, the, let me show you some hacks I did way back when that yeah. would <laughs> not be front facing. And they're like, look, it does the same thing. Yeah. And it's, uh, he makes a very good point and uh reading through all of that it certainly explains how react os got to the level of windows compatibility that it has right now without basically creating mm -hmm. wine os because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah wine would probably be able to do it but they'd have to build an entire operating system around wine to have this kind of compatibility if they didn't have some matter of access to the code and, you know, hey, man, this is straight accusations. I, I will say after reading through this, and especially when it was in that detail, it's like myth plausible. Also, mm -hmm. as much as we're going to be having a Microsoft loves Linux segment coming up, and <laughs> let's go ahead and start. Uh, litigious comes to mind. Yes. So if this has <laughs> legitimately been a provable issue that was a thing, I think Redmond would have already broken out the low orbit ion cannons. And like Mr. Alert is saying, they uh, React OS did do when the first accusations that they were lifting code uh, wholesale out of it yes. um, came out, they did an internal audit. and They did an audit mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, if we, the things that we saw, we were going to rewrite it. Mm -hmm. So I, the, I didn't know Microsoft had released an educational open source version of their kernel. It's like, you poor things. <laughs> no one wants that Microsoft. You hard. don't want that clearly. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Joe. And yeah, you know, like um Alan was saying, Alan actually, um uh, Mr. Alert in chat, it was a uh, uh 2006 to be exact. And I remember hearing about this on another tech podcast. And I think it actually was a Linux action show. And um uh, that that claim uh, led to a statement and and an internal audit audit by the React OS team. So uh, they're they've been used to dealing with this, <laughs> definitely. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's been a thing. <laughs> oh, this has been mentioned before. This is just a new update on it. So. Yeah, yeah it, it's no new information. It's still the same person claiming the exact same thing. He makes yeah. good arguments, but fact of the matter is nothing has happened yet. So that's <laughs> that. Hopefully it was a TIL for someone. So, okay. Um, oh, all right. Hang on. Oh, yes. I, I, here Microsoft we go. Loves Linux. Hang on, no, yes, no, here we, we go. We need the music. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Microsoft loves Linux. Yay, the segment. Mm -hmm. um, 
starting off. Yeah. So Linux dominates Azure. Yes. So last October, we talked about that half of Microsoft's Azure virtual machines were running Linux. Now the Linux usage on their cloud has sur surpassed Windows Server. Yay! And, you know, of course, we all knew that was going to happen. And it's no surprise and actually is one of the reasons why Microsoft wants to join the official Linux distros mailing list, which will be in our next story. <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, uh, Ven uh, talks about here how, you know, of course, Linux and BSD has dominated the server space since people started tracking it. So this is just no surprise at all. But it's a very exciting. I mean, this is a Microsoft product and, you know, Linux is dominant in that space. Pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Um, I, I didn't. We've all known this. Linux has dominated um, BSD and Linux since this has been tracked since the long, long ago. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, Microsoft, they've rolled out. And they're like, hey, we got our own thing now. You know, you need Amazon, bad as Oracle. And like, well, we're going to use what we know works. And I, I deep in my heart. I, I want to believe, like, in the future, one day, um, Microsoft will release something ready for the enterprise. But until <laughs> then, you keep trying, little buddy. <laughs> yes, you uh, keep Until trying. then, they keep holding organizations or the users in those organizations <laughs> by the uh, genitalia because, well... That's what people know. That's what. Uh, that's how they keep the market. They they're basically keeping everyone hostage. It's like, but it's Windows. You know, Windows pay us for it. Uh, and yeah, no. As someone who has to deal with that at work, I'm I'm really, really, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, world. Azure. All things considered, it's not the worst implementation I've seen of uh, when it comes to a web services type of platform. WordPress, uh, <laughs> the, the, their free one. It, it, Those the are free fighting one that words. They offer you. <laughs> you say WordPress. No, I'm no, like no, that's I'm, cute. I'm, I used to maintain Drupal headless. <laughs> Drupal. <laughs> Zoomla is also pretty bad, uh, but yeah, it's uh, no. Uh, the Amazon free one is really bad. If you deploy it yourself and you do a couple of uh, changes, it's actually very, very nice to work. Life changing realization uh, um, from one page. If you do something without knowing what you're doing, equals bad. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, no. Azure it works. Uh, it can be really slow unless whatever um, site or whatever uh, deployment you have going on there starts getting a lot of hits. That's when it, it does the Kubernetes thing and it spools up more instances and gives uh, that virtual mm -hmm. uh, environment more resources if it's getting more hits. But if it's just you, it's slow. It is yes. slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Is that and uh, since Jill already hit it at it, uh, let's uh, talk about why Microsoft would like to join the Linux-Distros mailing list. They just want to be friends, uh, man. Linux is awesome. Yeah. Now. It's making us money. Totally. Yes. So uh, <laughs> earlier in the week, uh, the uh, Linux Foundation and a couple of other uh, high-profile um, Linux organizations decided to share the fact that Microsoft is very keen on being a part of the Linux dash distros mailing list. And if you're just going by the name, it's like, so what's so special about that? Well, that is the mailing list where uh, all the Linux distros uh, sh uh, get together and they share like patches, upcoming Isn't patches it, for security vulnerabilities. Like a, bit of a private joint, right? Yeah, a little yeah. bit, <laughs> but it makes sense when you when you learn that it's yeah, it's where they discuss all of the up and coming patches for security vulnerabilities. That's where all of the Spectre and Meltdown stuff was being handled before it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where all of the zero day exploits uh, that haven't been you know made public yet are discussed, and how where mitigations are discussed and. A lot of development uh, tends to happen there. So that sounds very well and good for a company that is investing heavily in Linux and has a vested interest in Linux, especially given the previous story. Uh, so it makes sense that Microsoft would want to join. They, However, well, I can understand the point, man. They want early access to you know, yeah. security alerts. 
on Linux, However, which we just got done talking about. <laughs> That's the majority. Yeah. Uh, if uh, we are to take the whole embrace, expand, or extend, <laughs> extinguish uh, thing. Where did you get a time uh, machine? No, if we are to take that particular uh, view when we approach this particular situation, this is giving Microsoft the tools to enact the extinguish part. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is where all the holes are. Okay, let's start poking at them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Aw. Well, you know, like like Phaedra was saying, this does make sense, especially since Microsoft, you know, is developing their Azure Sphere OS and their Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. And, uh, you know, there's some other people on this list a lot of the Linux community hadn't cared too much about, including Oracle. <laughs> Oracle loves at Linux. One Yes. <laughs> they just don't like Google very much. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oracle I, I wonder if Sco's ever been on there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They probably were at some point. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I get it. I understand it. I, I think the biggest issue that everyone on that list is worried about Microsoft having access. They're like, oh, they're going to see all the smack we talk about Microsoft. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is a lot of concern about that. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. years of Microsoft Decades. bad mouthing, yep. and they're just going to come in and yeah. read all of it. <laughs> oh, man. to be fair, yeah. Microsoft brought that on themselves. Yeah, right. Hi, Steve Ballmer. Yes, oh, yes. He's too busy playing basketball or whatever he does. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's chasing developers. <laughs> <laughs> developers, developers, it's like you know, you know, Steve Irwin. They, they, oh, make that one. <laughs> <laughs> the developer yes. hunter, no crocodile hunter. <laughs> Steve, we we'll just put him in the middle of like Angel Springs in Australia. And he's gone. Give like ten minutes. Um, <laughs> beautiful people. Uh, we don't think uh, before we get into this slice of pie. Mm -hmm. Everyone supporting this show. It is a weird experiment that we're doing, where it's freeware. We just give everything out for free. We're like, hey man, if you like it, you get some value with it. You know. Could you spare four quarters or a few shekels a week? And a lot of you do. And that's really mm -hmm. awesome. In fact, 115 beautiful party patrons. Oh, yeah. Yay. Woo. Using <laughs> patreon.com. It's the best way for us to keep track and make sure you get in our Discord and all the cool little events we do and stuff like that. Uh, not just this show. It's streams we do on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the big show we do on Saturdays. That's why we're not uh, like, hey, that, we were talking about System 76 because we like them, not because they were writing a check to us. More importantly, mm -hmm. yeah. we weren't like, uh, I think that's important to point out. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they're great. Can do no wrong. Check clear. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we don't have to worry yeah, about Yeah, they're that bad now. No, no, don't yeah. say anything bad. Uh, <laughs> listen, if we ever start saying like really positive things about Microsoft, we're getting paid off. So watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think if Microsoft decided to pay us off, they probably would know better. <laughs> if, if Pedro shows up and he, he's like, man, Noam's awesome. That's just one thing in the back of my mind is like, Nori's missing. All right. Um, <laughs> thing, but uh, thanks everybody uh, we do have some uh, new things this week what, what's going down with that Jill? yeah yeah so i'm very excited nemo um or da de Kresny in chat increased his pledge thank you nemo awesome and uh, he's contributed so much to lgc over the years Mm -hmm. And he's just an awesome person, and we love him. <laughs> Pedro, you, you gotta get. He increased his pledge, so he deserves a half fact, a half truth uh -huh. about Dak. <laughs> a half yeah. truth. Well, uh, Nemo is mm -hmm. on the internet most of the time. He's got a System 76 uh, laptop back. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that system 76 backpack as he posted on discord so yes he clearly has some questionable uh taste that, that no. Hang on. no 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 we, we gotta do it you guys it's a half horrible. truth um <laughs> that he won oh. in hand-to-hand -hand combat against richard stallman <laughs> See, that's just a straight up lie though well, Pedro, <laughs> the problem is we've all seen your taste and it's rubbish <laughs> look my taste is not being called into question right now yes okay. it is i just, <laughs> I just hey. pay attention 
Maybe at least you're not wearing a yellow shirt, but um <laughs> Do it, man. I mean, ooh, ooh. yeah. I I'd say you were throwing shade, but that is a very bright yellow. So, oh, my vintage Linux shirt from the nineties. Vintage from the nineties, baby. It's like Soundgarden. I listened to some vintage Soundgarden the other night. Oh, what was one of the first Linux shirts? People, people, things getting making this possible. If you are curious, uh, everything... hold on. There was one thing. Oh, the, uh, I thought you were just going to skip over it. No, 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 no. Uh, so, um, yes. Mr. Mike G uh, has decided he wants to basically buy us all the things. And so mm -hmm. he sent me a gift from my wish list. It was your guest appearance on another Linux podcast that led me to this train wreck. Thanks for everything you do. From Mike G. You've been cheating on me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mike G got me a Corsair uh, M55 RGB Pro. Which I had added like two days uh, prior to him buying it uh, to the wish list because, oh, that's going to be a, an ambidextrous mouse. It looks the same, so it doesn't have no, that No, 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 it looks the same as yeah. a shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who wore it better? <laughs> but uh, yeah it's got the ambidextrous design and on top of that there's one thing that uh, from the hand feel that i got of it earlier it's tall it's bulky i can palm it and my hand doesn't hit the desk so that's, that's so nice really really nice <laughs> so yeah kudos man. kudos thank oh, you very thank much thank you mike, mike g, g. The, um, it's, uh, we love you. It, it will be played around heavily <laughs> over the coming weeks. I was about to say, Joe, you better get some formation in that goatsy. Um, <laughs> bring it in. Um, the At least it doesn't look like a spaceship. It has that going for it. Um, yes, and it does have the RGBs. It's got like the uh, the Corsair logo at the back. You which just lost all my love up. for it. Um, yeah. yeah no. <laughs> and the, the, the little stupid LED here. The, um, uh, nope. It also does RGB. <laughs> nope. the, the people at home, they're genuinely worried. Uh, not worried, uh, wondering. What's it taste like? <laughs> Look at Pedro. <laughs> Solid plastic. <laughs> Styrene. Styrene. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to add that to our uh, this thing that we have. If you're curious about everything in the studio, we'll put that in, uh, mm -hmm. where will we put it? The PC? Is that where we put the mouse stuff? Yes, uh, but not yet, because the uh, the yeah, we'll Corsair CKB Next, which is the unofficial Corsair software for Linux, mm -hmm. it doesn't support that particular version yet, yet, but I've already submitted the report that they want when you ask for new equipment to be supported. Mm -hmm. So... I'm guessing in a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks. It's already closed. It'll be done. No. Nah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> High steam. More about that on Saturday. Um, yeah. We do uh, maintain that list on our website, stuff that Pedro has, everything I have in the studio, stuff that Jordan has. If mm -hmm. you're like, we're not even worried. If you're like, okay, you know it works on Linux before it ends up on that list. You know, that's what I say. Vin tested FSM approved. And we have a thing about stuff that we're planning on getting. So if you want to see how we're going to spend our billions of dollars, um, that's also a thing. Merch. Mm -hmm. We have shirts. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, we have uh, LWDW shirts. If, uh, say, you like this particular show, what we're doing nope. right now. Can't stand it. <laughs> I'm going to get one with the skeleton. <laughs> Oh or, yeah, you can totally get the Frankophile shirt. I'm going to cover you my cat some... in chairs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can cover your dog in um, some sort of male-looking logos with stickers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell, elks hoodies. <laughs> and, You're going to get a promotion need... to our advertising department, Pedro. That's. <laughs> I tried, man. I you did. do. You do. Big swings. Big swings. <laughs> Yeah, we do have some hoodies and a uh, bunch of fun stuff. I, I'm, I own one of each, except for the one with my face on it. Not, not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll have to get Pedro too. I'll get Nori one. I know Nori would wear it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nori, uh, she says she wants one of the, uh, the pink Hell Elix hoodies like Jill has. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of pink, it's time. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Pie. 
And yes, I've been to the pie hole in Los Angeles. <laughs> and th this was so, back in yay. the mid 80s. So it's a completely different thing than what you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. This is, uh, as we talked about last week, with the release of the Raspberry Pi 4, a new Raspbian operating system based on the forthcoming Debian 10 Buster has been released. Yay! Why does it look like a murder wiener? Because uh, it is. Because because it's it's <laughs> named after that dog from Toy Story, as all of uh, Debian distros are named after Toy Story characters. And uh, Buster comes with many updates, performance improvements, and a more modern UI. And it, what's really cool, it has been released slightly in advance of the official July 7th Debian Buster release to accommodate the Pi 4's open source OpenGL video driver that is now default and was developed using the most recent version of Debian. The Raspberry Raspbian desktop environment has a nice new uh, UI theme that is cleaner, more modern, and more simplified. And there's a new screen capture tool to accommodate the Raspberry Pi 4's multi-monitor support. Yay! You can run two yep. 4K monitors on the Raspberry Pi 4. <laughs> <laughs> at 30 frames per second, yes. Have you yes, ever but have you still... seen a mouse cursor at 30? <sighs> oh, yeah. It, it's bad. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's bad enough where you take a picture of it and you actually send a video to somebody or you ring somebody and you're like, come here, look at yeah, this. Yeah, you can see the, yeah. <laughs> It's adorable. But the yeah. point is, you can run multi monitor on the Raspberry Pi. You can. Just and that's awesome. Maybe you don't want to plug the. Uh, I don't want to give it any false solutions. I'm waiting. Hey, add a fruit. Call me <laughs> or get it back in stock. I, <laughs> I I have an alerts out on the internet for the um, four gig model. But the four gig I version. Yeah. want to try to yeah, build one of it's... these Opti boxes. And that's <laughs> like the big one. It's like, ooh, four gigabytes. And mm -hmm. it's got a new SOC with a an improved GPU. So it's got all of that performance. So how do we put more uh, strain on the already struggling Raspberry Pi? Well, we enabled GLX out of the box. Because if you've ever played with the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi, you'll know that the default driver that it loads, it doesn't do any uh, OpenGL acceleration. So... It is as low power as it'll possibly get it. Mm -hmm. Now, with uh, the new version of Raspbian, uh, out of the box, on the Raspberry Pi 4, it enables the GLX drivers. Yay! That, finally! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so you, I you, would have you, made the argument that the Raspberry yeah. Pi 3 was powerful enough already for that, but yeah. You have a B3. <laughs> yeah. A. a. You have an A3? I have an A... Uh, 3A. <laughs> All right. Booting off of, because the new Pies have um, USB 3. Yep. Do you still have to burn a permanent fuse to make it boot off USB now? Uh, mm. Burn a permanent fuse? I... <laughs> I'm talking about something neither of these people. You're going to hear two educated guesses, and that's the best you can do. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I didn't boot a, this one off the USB because I prepared the uh, SD card on the laptop. Yeah, and... SD cards are not designed. You're just you're just <laughs> buying SD cards to watch them burn. Uh, actually, yeah. this is uh one of those turbo SDA U3 mm -hmm. cards that have a max write speed of like a hundred and something oh, megs oh, per oh, second. Okay, <laughs> now let me pause at this on a scale of that and USB three. Uh, yeah, USB 3 yeah. is still faster. Uh -huh. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the point being is you could boot or you can boot, and that's how you would set yes. it up to boot off of um, like an SSD if you wouldn't have a plug into USB 2 on the old ones. I don't know. I've seen the videos, man. They exist. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the only yeah. way to get it to set up maybe, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. you have to send a command that tells the Raspi to like do that, and you can do it once, apparently. So that's yeah. what I was curious about. Yes. No, I very true. <laughs> I think with the Raspberry Pi... A three B plus, you didn't have to do that because I do remember just booting off a of USB. But with the older versions, I believe you do. Mm. But um, I need to check that as well because I've only done it once. <laughs> that uh, I, I look forward to experiencing um, all the ins and outs and what it can do. And yes, Jibs, that's really the only uh, use I could see for having two mini HDMI ports. Is like, well, when you break the first one, 
You'll be more careful yeah. with the second one. <laughs> 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 Worst case scenario, it's got gigabit Ethernet, so SSH dash X. Huh? All right. Yep. Clippy. Clippy's older brother went to university, yeah. got a job. <laughs> now now he's a mid-level executive. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. And he talks in corporate speak a lot, and he's your corporate companion. Uh, yes, Clippy's big brother is a talking suitcase that you two can make yourself <laughs> with a, a Raspberry Pi and a, a power bank. Uh, an external USB speaker, uh, some felt furniture pads for the, uh, totally the irises the on the eyes, uh-huh. uh, and um, a popsicle stick to get the lid to open and close to simulate like he's talking. Uh, <laughs> so the creator of this monstrosity, which looks absolutely adorable, uh, <laughs> is, um, well, he... It's parody. It's basically parody. Uh, he wanted to really have something that looks corporate and spouts corporate nonsense at you. Yeah. I and love the 80s decided, working music. <laughs> so, sorry, he sorry, He decided Pedro. to um, <laughs> basically uh, give it some lines. And this is the first time I heard about uh, TTSMP3.com, which you type something, you uh, hear it. If you like it, you can download the MP3 mm -hmm. of it. That, well, I didn't know about that, and I'm pretty sure most people where I work don't know about that, so things will oh. happen, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I hate man, it's Python, so what else? I don't know. I, I can't make anything like this, because I would just sit around feeding it mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a suitcase. You could probably fit, what, like three, four liters of mayonnaise no, no, into no, it? you spoon feed it. <laughs> 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 well i had thought of another use for this this is your office space corporate companion or maybe it's a snarky version of the internet internet box from the it crowd <laughs> or you could it could bees. be the internet <laughs> <laughs> and whenever it opens his mouth a couple of them fly out <laughs> i mean you know some people like to live a little <laughs> <laughs> and you know you put an epi pin in there i mean you don't be a total monster mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess you, if you wanted to you could still use it as a uh a, a suitcase but yeah no <laughs> no, no. <All> right. <laughs> the point here is to have something that's completely useless far too big and all it does is spout nonsense could have <laughs> well yes. done Okay, maybe you know of something that is far too big, uh, completely useless, and spouts nonsense, and you want to tell us about it, or Hello. you have some thoughts, hints, allegations. You're a tiny little thing, child. Um, <laughs> tell us Six about one. it. Give us some ideas, projects. Maybe you want to come on the show. Tell us about what you have going on. How do they do that magic moon? Well, uh, there, there's a spell book you can buy that lets you send telepathic messages to whomever you'd like. But okay, the best right. way to so, get in touch right, with us... Right. You're in England, dude. you you got to tap, tap out on the witchcraft thing. Not a good track record. Uh, Salem. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> you suck at geography, baby. <laughs> 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 and this is news how well if you'd like to let us know how much <laughs> i suck at geography go to lucygamecast.com uh fill out your name your email your subject and the message that you'd like to send our way and uh, make sure you pick lwdw from the little show box so once you have that feel free to <laughs> hit that submit button and Smash as long as your email clears friend. yeah uh <laughs> as long as your email clears we will probably feature your uh thing right here right now we'll like give it a mention. i want to say be very careful though um and not be be rem don't be somebody i should publicly shame who's a game developer because i get logs because we use a service to it and it's like hey man is this spam <laughs> if it's not spam come on through if it is spam it's like denied and they were persistent even though it's like do not copy and paste the press release because a bunch of links is going to trigger the spam golem they mm -hmm. were at it for a good 15 <laughs> minutes pedro <laughs> uh, yeah. it's like oh it doesn't work oh it doesn't yeah. work oh it doesn't work <laughs> i feel bad but I, I didn't see it's like you know what no no we're, we're good send us a message leave us a note on patreon on the post on that we'll 
get back to you because you're a bosses and uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's the thing too. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we got a little bit, uh, I, I fear, nay, nay, it is my duty to report someone was in fact wrong on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this comes to us from uh, Mir PPC in <laughs> chat. <laughs> Last week, Pedro said the pocket chip had no Wi-Fi. Note, at the time the chip came out, there was no RP Raspberry Pi Zero out. It was just a few weeks away and had just been announced it was coming when the Kickstarter ended. Yes, this means the chip also predates the Pi Zero W, which killed most of the in interest in the chip. To point out the fallacy of Pedro's statement, I have linked a picture of the chip I did an unboxing of for Linux Gamecast. Jill has what used to be my pocket chip. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I, and I sure do. <laughs> and uh, and apparently <laughs> the chip uh, has a combo Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, yes. <laughs> thing on it. So, yes. I was wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you're accustomed to like not caring, this was like, you're wrong. You're like, yeah, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I didn't lose any, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. No, it's a, no, that's a fair call out. And the uh, fact yeah. of the matter is the chip <laughs> is now, uh, what's the word for a uh, dead? Well, yeah. you know, that's what, what, what's different. It's not <laughs> deprecated. They went bankrupt. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they, they straight up just, yeah. Died. Yeah, fire. <laughs> the, um, so what are the odds of that chip that you were given, Jill, being not absorbed <laughs> into your um, hoard? Do you, do you know it already was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I totally I just know where it's at. I was like, go get it then. Yeah. Actually, it's in the hall right now. Why is it in the hall? It's not a dog. It doesn't need walks. Yeah. <laughs> but it was thirsty. I gotta keep it out. So I put it in the show so it doesn't bug me. <laughs> Beautiful people we gotta get out of here. Thanks for showing us live. Uh, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, I'm stopping mm -hmm. in a little Discord or IRC, which is all tied in. And say hi. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Maybe. <Bye>. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Ooh, all right. I waited a little long on that. There we go. Boom. That's it. That's me. That's, that, me. that's, that's a Pedro. not me. That's a not me. <laughs> and that's a Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Looks like Yay. Oh, hey, Our executive are producers. Are Atomic, Mike C, Bob Brown, Drummer 7, all these. Damn it. <laughs> Those are all of the awesome people. <laughs> That uh, basically made this show because LWDW would not be coming to you right now or, you know, leaving you right now if it weren't for these people. Mm -hmm. They're all crazy. <laughs> and I love them. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, chat room. Aww, you guys are awesome. And thank you again, Mike G. And the Kresny. <laughs> yep. Mike G is just running away with Frank's, um... Yes. Fine, upstanding cannibals with wall. With Frank's what? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we love you.